Good afternoon, Northwest, and welcome to the spooky edition of Husky Headlines. I'm Allie Brenneman. And I'm Ian Graham. Hey, Allie, have you noticed students delivering drinks to teachers every Friday? It's so unfair. I know. Aaron tells us more about the program behind Sonic Friday. Thanks to the students in Robin Hodges' third and fourth hours, teachers can have drinks delivered to their rooms every Friday. Students from our program, our intensive resource program, through my third and fourth hours, participate. We train them on social skills and on how to deliver and how to count the money. We have a program, a cash register program that they use. We receive some grant money to help with the cash registers to get that authentic experience for them as well. And then we have peer mentors that also go around with the students so that they're working alongside them to train and teach the students from 102 as well. So the drinks are limited to a size large cold drink. And so they can get anything that Sonic offers, but it has to be a size large and we do only cold beverages. There's a Google form that comes out and you put your name, the room where you're gonna be during third or fourth hour because that's the window in which they're delivered. You select your drink and then any other comments. I think it's awesome. I think it's kind of this nice synergy that there's some skills being taught within the operation of the program, but it's this little bit of joy that that program brings to teachers. And I know it seems small, but just to have that refreshing thing on a, after a long week, it's just kind of fun, something to look forward to, something to be excited about. And I order early enough in the week that I forget, and then I am even more surprised, and it's even a better little joy because I hadn't thought about it. And then I just get a scramble for $2, and hopefully I can find it in time. They work on social skills with introducing to the teacher that the drinks are here. And then we have a cash register app that they use that they perform and it make the change and things like that too. The students benefit, I think, hugely from this program because it is real life math skills and real skills in a real situation where they're having to use cash register, making change, counting back change, along with the social skills that are involved with that. You can teach anything on paper, but if you aren't doing it and actually applying it, it doesn't really help, I think, out in the real world. So this is providing them real world opportunities here within the school. I don't know. I just kind of am always pleased to see what other teachers are doing and, and how creative they are in bringing something valuable to their classroom. It's great to see students that I normally don't get to interact with that I get a chance to interact with however briefly. And then there's the caffeine addict in me that says, oh, joy, more caffeine, right? And also the fact that it's just kind of that one thing to look forward to. And I think those little things that give us joy and happiness as small as they might be and as insignificant as they might seem might make the difference between you know having a really good Friday and an average Friday. And the students love it too. Sonic Fridays are a very happy day as well. They like being out. It's not sitting at a desk or doing other math problems or working on different things that way. They get to be out. They get to be interactive. They get to work with teachers they might not normally see and the response from the teachers is always very uplifting too. The students love that. Sonic Friday has brought joy to both the students participating and the teachers receiving drinks strengthening the community within the school along the way. This is Aaron Tribby and Allie Brenneman reporting for Husky Headlines. <laughs> Allie, I was waiting outside for my mom to pick me up and I realized that all my favorite rocks are gone. What's happening? I'd ask Aaron if I were you. He knows all about the construction out front. For the first time in 15 years, the front entrance of Blue Valley Northwest is being remodeled using leftover class gift money. The plan for the redesign actually started with um, NHS. Um, working and thinking about redesigning, kind of beautifying the campus. And so they actually started working with a landscape person to come up with a possible idea for out front. And then they were able last spring to do the right side as you walk up the right side. And then we started talking about the left side, kind of their plan. Then we met with some buildings and grounds people here at district who kind of had a little bit different idea. So we morphed the two ideas together. And then we're using some funds that are class gift funds that have been left for us to do with once so we've pulled a bunch of those together to be able to cover the cost of the front. In 15 years is probably time to start thinking about how we do some things different. With the school needing a new look, the redesign hopes to bring beauty and functionality together with a bronze husky statue as the centerpiece. The big rocks that kids sit on are going to get moved to the walkway in front of the library and then basically the area out front will be concreted in with the exception of there'll be one round circular flower bed with seating around it and then and in the middle will be a pedestal, and on the pedestal we've had a bronzed husky commissioned out of, out of a company in California, um, and so that will actually be mounted on the top of the pedestal. NHS was involved in the first and in the initial project of kind of talking about beautifying the front, and then NHS, as you walk up to the building on the right-hand side where all those flowers are planted and things, NHS actually did all of that work. So once we kind of sat down this summer and figured out how much class gift money we had and did we have enough to cover it, 
and could we find a statue that we liked, then we were able to move forward with getting the left side of the front done. Those involved in the construction hope that the renovations are an aesthetic improvement to the campus. This is Aaron Avery and Nick Swyden building up your knowledge for Husky Headlines. Ian, my ears are bleeding. You're not even average at either of those things. I found out about Danny Robinson, a senior who participates in both football and band. The heavy workload of a high school student often causes students to be overwhelmed with activities and jobs, but senior Danny Robinson has taken on two time-consuming activities in band and football. Football itself is very difficult. It's a lot of hard work. Band is less work, but it's just doing both of them together. You just don't get a lot of time to recover. With Danny, you know, being in a part of both band and football, he has to manage his time really, really well. And not only that, he's a senior in both of those, and so he probably has some leadership responsibilities when it comes to band, but he certainly does as a captain of the football team as well. Danny is pretty special in our program. Um, he creates kind of a spirit and energy that other students can't quite match, but we're really interested in accommodating for students who are interested in being in multiple activities and he's kind of a great example of that, which I think is a great thing for high schoolers to do, to explore the different areas of what they might be interested in and to have enough time to do both. Participating in both of these activities can take a toll on Robinson. I'm very busy. Most days I'm at the school from like 11 to 12 hours. So I get to band, it starts at seven, and I end up leaving football practice anywhere from like six to 6.30. There are a couple times where I just can't do it all. So I'll have like a missing assignment and go and talk to the teacher, get it all figured out. Obviously, band's going to require a lot of different things. Football's going to require a lot of different things. You know, Danny's got to switch from football to band at halftime of home games. So there's even those types of things where, you know, you're not, not even able to fully invest in either one on a game night. So you've got to switch from one to another. He really works hard at everything that he does. So I'm certain when he goes to band, he gives everything that he has to making sure his steps are right. And, you know, he's in unison with everybody else. And I think that's a, a good translation to how it is for the offensive line. Everybody's got to work together and their steps have to be in order and, and everything's got to work in unison. So he's just a special young man that really cares about everything that he does and making sure that it's done to a high level. I'm a very carefree person. I don't let it get to me that much. I just get home, relax, but a couple times it's just been a lot. I just laid down and went, Whew. I'm like super busy. The cooperation and communication between Robinson and the heads of these activities, as well as between the activities themselves, has allowed for Robinson to continue both of these hobbies throughout his high school career. This is Allie Brenneman and Jay Oaks giving the play-by-play -play on this story for Husky Headlines. Hey Ian, that made me realize that I've never been to a sporting event other than to film. What's it like? I'm not really into sports either, but the spirit leaders get me really hyped up when I do go. Nathan tells us more about this story. With homecoming just around the corner, a group of students are doing everything they can to excite the student body and our community about the Huskies. The spirit leaders kind of group um, is really an interesting one, I think could be a really exciting one. Uh, after having some conversations when I first came to Northwest, it was pretty evident that the administration and some of the adults in the building needed to build a closer relationship with the students that truly care about the building and care about the culture and have pride for being a Husky in general. And I reached out to the student council executives to help me formalize a group of kids, a group of students that I could talk to, get advice from, kind of empower to do the things they wanna do to build and bolster school culture here at Northwest. It's something different than just being in a sport or being in um, another club. I think you can use your voice to help cheer on and support your school. I've had a brother and sister go through Northwest and they were also kind of a spear leader, not necessarily like the same thing that we're doing, but they led chance and it's a unique opportunity because not everybody gets to do that. So I think it's just a special thing that's involved with school. There's a lot of apprehension, I think, for freshmen when they come into a high school environment, they're not sure quite how to act to fit in. Our spirit leaders are crafting and have crafted some ways to make freshmen feel included and feel like they're a part of that culture already. Although the spirit leaders are only comprised of upperclassmen, they use their chants and rallies to bring freshmen into the Northwest community. I think it's important that the underclassmen have the spirit leaders as role models. It's really great to have a sense of community in the school and following the lead of the upperclassmen is very productive in learning different traditions that we have and chants that we have. As the freshmen become the sophomores and incoming freshmen come, I think understanding that it, it's not dumb to be loud at school events and it's not dumb to cheer at assemblies. The culture, the environment, the spirit that develops in a school is largely what brings us together, what ties us together. Students come to school because 
because they want to be involved in things that they have passions and interests. And if we can find a way as a student body, as a staff, to tie those passions and interests together using this one Northwest philosophy, it makes the building a better place to be. Culture is what makes school fun. The spirit leaders will continue attending Northwest activities and leading students in expressing spirit. This is Nathan Fortune and Max Smith with Husky Headlines. <laughs> As someone who did gymnastics in fourth grade, I know that's wrong. But Lily tells us more about a real gymnast at Northwest. Bella Hart, a Northwest freshman, leaves school every day after fifth hour to pursue her passion for gymnastics. Putting in 25 hours of practice a week, Hart still somehow finds a way to balance her academic, social, and athletic life. I started taking classes when I was about one, but I was, I've been competing since I was around six. I'm in training level eight and there's 10 levels. So hopefully I'll be level 10 by the time I'm a senior. I have been Isabella Hart's coach for roughly going on five years now. I put together pretty much all of her workouts here at the gym. And then we suggest things to do outside of the gym as far as strength and conditioning, flexibility, rest, repair, nutrition, those sort of things. Bella is a really good student and very organized and focused. She knows exactly what she can handle and what she can't. I didn't have to really set any guidelines for her. She's done it herself. I had to sacrifice like all of the extra classes at school. Like I could only do my main classes in one elective and then I had to sacrifice my social life too because I didn't really get to have time to like hang out with friends or anything other than my gymnastics friends. Hart's just a fun kid to have in the gym. She's pretty upbeat, makes everybody laugh. You got to have a little bit of that in the gym when you're here 20 to 25 hours a week. She tries really hard, she works really hard, and the reason that she has gotten where she is in gymnastics and why she does well in school is because of her determination, her focus, and her perseverance. Through gymnastics, Hart often travels, making school life even more difficult. However, she is able to combat this obstacle with her hardworking attitude and tenacity that has earned her multiple accomplishments. I have like around eight meets a year. One meet that we host is in town, and then state is either in Wichita or here mostly. Last year, we went to to Chicago, Iowa, some other places like Oklahoma and stuff. So hopefully I'll be level 10 by the time I'm a senior. She's been regional qualifier last year at level seven. She has numerous state titles. The level's below level seven, three, four, five, six. And we're just pushing to get ready to be level eight and move on to hopefully level eight regionals at the end of the year. With the goal to continue with gymnastics and pursue it as a career, Hart hopes to get a scholarship and have the sport be a part of her life forever. This is Lily Torres and Seth Williams for Husky Headlines. And now it's time for this year's- The first of the year. Yes, this year's first edition of Top 10 with Jay Oaks. Good afternoon, Northwest. I'm Jay Oaks, and here are Northwest Athletics' Top 10 Plays of the Month. At number 10, we have Drew Mason finishing in the top 30 at the Rimrock Cross Country Meet on September 28th. At number 9, we have Reagan Koss seeking a putt at Heritage Golf Course on September 24th. At number 8, we have Will Vankram scoring a goal to make the score 1-2 versus Blue Valley West on September 26th. At number 7, we have Annabelle Nitz and Mia DeMaria scoring a point off a of volley versus Blue Valley North on September 26th. At number 6, we have Leo Clennon forcing a fumble that would be recovered by sophomore Drew Peterson versus Harrisonville on September 26th. At number five, we have Isaiah Smith scoring a touchdown off an interception to make the score 19 to 21 versus Blue Valley Southwest on September 27th. At number four, we have Riley Beach finishing in the top 15th at the Rimrock Cross Country Meet on September 28th. At number three, we have Elson Garrick scoring a point off a set from Cameron Hahn versus Bonner Springs on September 18th. At number two, we have Chris Colley shooting and scoring on a penalty kick to tie the game 2-2 versus Blue Valley West on September 26th. At number one, we have Evan Ranallo catching a touchdown pass from sophomore Mikey Pauley, beating Harrisonville 34-28 in overtime on September 28th, snapping their 13-game losing streak. This is Jay Oaks with the help of Max Smith bringing you this month's top 10 plays. Hey Ian, do you have any siblings at the school? Nope. And I'm an only child. I guess we can't relate to the Pearson sisters. Melanie tells us more about this volleyball duo. Blue Valley Northwest has not seen two sisters on the same volleyball court in years. However, this year, Miko and Elena Pearson are both playing on the varsity volleyball team. I'd say the team is more fun, yeah, because her, I can yell at her differently than everybody else. But it's also more fun because she understands now everything we have to go through, whereas I feel like before she was kind of like high school volleyball, whatever, but now she gets it. Yeah, we've gotten a lot closer, especially like since I was a freshman, so I didn't really know anybody on the team. She was kind of there to like introduce me and stuff like that. I 
think it's always really unique when you have um, a sibling combo on any team, so I always like to see that dynamic. They have complemented each other so well back there. I've really enjoyed, you know, when Elena makes a great up, I've seen Miko run up to her and just kind of like push her and give her a little like chest bump and get pumped up for her. So it is really fun to get to see them celebrate each other and push each other. Miko and Elena have a really close relationship. I have known Miko and Elena for a really long time. I played with Miko in club volleyball when we were just 11. Elena would always be there supporting Miko at all of our tournaments and it was really cool to see how supportive her younger sister was of her. Growing up, the sport has brought the sisters closer together and continues to at a higher level now that they are playing on the same high school varsity team. When we were younger, we used to fight a lot like normal siblings do, but now that we're older and especially now that we're playing together, I think it's brought our relationship closer and kind of bettered each other in the fact that we have that connection now and if someone was like, how do you feel about your sister? I can say, I actually love my sister and we don't fight. We just work really well together on and off the court. When I need a partner, then like I can practice with her and she's kind of just like a role model to look up to a little bit. Being together more often because it's kind of made us like closer as sisters and closer as teammates as well. Do I think I play better? Sort of, in a way, because it pushes me, one, to continue to be better than her because it's kind of embarrassing if your younger sister is better than you, but also because I want to show her how she's supposed to do it after I'm gone because, like I said, she's going to have to run the team and things like that in my position, so it's also kind of a teaching opportunity. I think Miko, being the way that she is and everybody respecting her and loving her, it definitely makes it, you know, a little bit easier of a transition to hop into a role when your sister is like that and she's a senior leader, but everybody's been really accepting and I think Elena's just fit in really easily through all the summer stuff that we've done and all the playing that they've done in the past together. The Pearsons have developed a bond on the court as teammates and off the court as sisters, and they are excited to finish out the remainder of the volleyball season together. This is Melanie Wilkins and Jay Oaks for Husky Headlines. Allie, have you ever been in the play? To be or not to be, that is the question. Plus, I was councilwoman number one in my middle school's production of Footloose. Oh my, if only Declan were here to help you with your acting. I got an inside look on this story. After acting in multiple theater productions in and out of Northwest, junior Declan Franey is co-directing the upcoming production, Check Please. I've been interested in going into theater as a career, and I'm not sure exactly if it's acting or directing yet. So I just asked him at the end of last year, and he said that I would be able to work with him directing like the full show, Check Please. I think it was a really good decision for Mr. Landis to make, and it really works together really well, the two together. I think that it gives a great sense of home to a lot of new actors coming to try to do theater at Northwest. Declan's definitely somebody that can really hype people up and give them good information about what they're doing wrong and what they're doing right. This is a big cast show, so um, and it's a lot of different scenes, but it's mostly between the guy and the girl and their blind dates. So we usually start by deciding who's going to go with the guy and who's going to go with the girl first. And then we go and watch those scenes individually, and then we swap and we watch the other scenes individually. And then if we have any questions or things that we want to make comments about, then we just discuss it afterwards and see where we're at with it. My kind of plan for each day is have each person run their scene and then I give guiding tips on how they can really become their character more or get into the show and understand it. I'm not a director who likes to say you should do this at this point, do a hand movement here. I want them to make sure it comes from a character perspective. When Declan is directing you can definitely relate to him really well because obviously he's just another student and he's just like the rest of us and it's really a great feeling to be up there and knowing that you're with somebody that will push you in the right direction and not judge you at the same time. After gaining experience producing the show, Franey discusses the differences between acting and directing. Whenever you're acting in a show, you definitely have ideas of how the full thing works because normally you're focused on your character, but you also understand how the other characters interact and you always have an idea of what people should do. But as a director, it's really cool to be able to really see the vision of how you want the full show to be. He's looking at it from this perspective of an actor a lot and what the actor should be doing in the moment, which is what a director does also. Declan is working very hard. He's got a good eye for helping actors to try to get to what they need to do and makes a lot of good suggestions for them. So he's doing very well. After Check Please debuts on October 17th and 18th in the Little Theater, Franny hopes to continue theater in both high school and as a career. This is Ian Graham and Imran Bengish for Husky Headlines. Ali, what are you doing? That's a dead person. I'm trying to prepare for the Halloween gauntlet. You missed it. Nathan tells us more about this exciting competition. 
With Halloween just around the corner, we've gathered two teams to face off in a series of three Halloween challenges. The challenges are worth one point apiece, with the winning team earning a bucket of Halloween candy. Now, let's meet the teams. On the left, we have Team Boo Crew, and on our right, we have Team Trick and Treat. In our first challenge, each team will have limited time and resources to build the best Halloween costume. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Oh, bold moves, Jenna. Okay. Joey, you got this. I can't. These are safety scissors, and I am a big 10th grader. Okay, got to be big enough for, to fit for in. For Jenna. Three like minutes. a pro. Three minutes. Ah! Three minutes. Ah! Okay, Jay, we're making. Oh. Oh. Hold the scissors. This is more stressful than college applications. How do you make an S? How do you spell S? Nope. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, just tape this out. Just tape this part down. Doesn't matter. <laughs> no, not right in the middle. Five. Four, Ours is so good. Three, two. <laughs> I can't one. rip the tape. Okay, <laughs> The Boo Crew shows off their rendition of Toad from Mario Kart, cart included, complete with flames, a steering wheel, and a mushroom hat. Trick and Treat took Superman to new heights with the iconic S and flowing red cape. In our second challenge, one member of each team must wear oven mitts and unwrap candy, while the other team member must eat as much as possible. Okay, skills, straight skills, Jenna, go. Okay, skills for the bills. Uh, I'm eating the bag of Laura. Oh my god, there's so many. Oh, Jenna! Eat all of them! Continue! No more. Continue! Okay, mm -mm. Jenna, you need mm -mm. to eat. Mm -mm. Hun, I love you, but you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, you can't do that! Okay. Okay. Two, two Snickers. Eat those. Uh-uh. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero, stop eating. <laughs> While both teams finish nine packages, Trick and Treat gets the point due to cheating from Team Boo Crew. For the final challenge, one team member from each team must describe a design to the other, who must carve it onto a pumpkin. The most accurate carving wins. And when push comes to shove, because we're, we're going to start head first, I'm going to put a smiley face on it. Go, 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 go. Okay, go, 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 go. okay, okay. If I finish the eyes. Now what do I carve? Imagine. Then what? Okay, then coming above the branch, there are yeah. two little, like, cat paws. Like two little paws what? You're lucky I'm literally pure muscle. Oh. I don't have muscles for this. Like, it's okay, you're doing awesome. No, but literally, I, I have noodles better. for arms, Laura. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. <laughs> help me push this part out. I can't help you. What do you mean you can't help me? I can't help you. Ah! Ouch, ouch. This isn't supposed to I stabbed myself. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I think we should get extra points for finishing early, Mary. That's what I think. <laughs> I'm in graphic design. Sorry, Mrs. Worth. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what we knew we were going to do, so like... Uh, it kind of looks like a cat if you squint yeah. your eyes and bang your head really hard against a wall. We had him in the first half. And the second. Go skis. Whoop. We hope you were bewitched by this October edition of Husky Headlines. Have a spooky day, Northwest.